Do you still remember when BMW entered to the superbike market? Everybody was skeptical that uh, what do they want there? This is not their market. But the sellings absolutely said that they were right. And uh, the same uh, criticism arrived when Harley Davidson uh, told that they are going to enter to the big touring enduros market. But Harley Davidson was brave enough to bring us the new Pan America big premium touring enduro for 2021. The bikes looking for the first sight is really shocking, but uh, its knowledge is absolutely worth to know it from closer. The thing because of which a lot of people are upset is the looking of the front part of the motorbike but I personally I think that Harley Davidson really uh, works for a big big red point because they didn't copy the big uh, let's say group of the touring enduros uh, they didn't make a front part like a GS or, or uh, the Vistrom or anything like that they built a Harley Davidson because this front part if you look it from the uh, profile if you look it from the uh, face of it uh, it is really looking like a big touring Harley for example a road glide special uh, it is much closer to a Harley Davidson than to a touring enduro and also this very long fuel tank is uh, looking really like a Harley uh, if we check the whole silhouette of the motorbike the big V2 engine, the rear section, the seat and things like this, then it is much closer to a, let's say, average touring enduro. Uh, but anyhow, if you check the bike, then it is really looking like a Harley Davidson. Pan America got a brand new engine. This is a 1250 Revolution Max. This is its name. Uh, it follows the Harley traditions on a way that this is a 60 degree V2, but from all the other points, this is a really modern 21st century uh, engine uh, with two cylinders, but uh, four volts per cylinders. Um, SO, uh, DOHC, sorry, and with hydraulic everything inside, so it's pretty a uh, modern engine. Uh, all in all, it is 1,252 cubic centimeter, and uh, the outputs are really high 150 brake horsepower and 127 newton meter is the torque. I'm sick and tired, So all the parameters are absolutely sufficient and the Screaming Eagle exhaust, which is of course not serial, but it's an option, sound of it is also very, very beautiful. Engineers didn't want to build a heavy touring enduro, that's why maybe this is the first Harley Davidson in the modern era in which the engine is a main element and the rear subframe and the front frame are connected to the engine itself. And as a result of this, the gross weight of the whole Pan America is uh, 254 kilos, which is an absolutely good uh, data in the today's field in this class. Uh, the dry weight is some 220 some kilos, so it's really not a heavy motorbike. And it's very important to speak about the loadability of it because it is 275 kilos which is really a great great data among all the other touring enduros so we have to be pleased for all the americans who are overweighted because of their heavy body weight engineers build us this well loadable pan america and what is this huge amount of brake horsepower and newton meter enough for well we can say that on public roads really for everything now i let the rpm down until uh, 2000 and start to accelerate from here so even from 2000 the bike's torque is always enough and from 4000 it really starts to accelerate hard and uh, we have to say and with, with the screaming eagle exhaust the sound of it is really like a dream and check out how dynamic is it I 
have to say that after after 180 kilometers per hour the acceleration is uh, reducing a little bit but the top speed is much much faster several 10 kilometers per hour above this but for public road use the dynamism of the pan america is i have to say that more than enough the bike has several riding modes the basic one is the road mode uh, which is constructed for the real everyday uh, road riding public road riding we have the sport mode where the throttle response the acceleration and everything is much much harder but also the suspension is changing as well we also have the soft off-road mode which is made for the normal uh, dirt road riding so not extreme hard ones and we also have the rain mode but as the sun is shining i'm not going to speak about it to you and these riding modes can absolutely be customized uh, from which do you want to choose when pushing the mode button while riding from the main menu uh, you can uh, activate or deactivate the different modes so for example when you never ride in rain mode then simply switch it off and it's not going to come up again when you are riding the only thing that you cannot switch off is the road mode the sport and the normal off-road can be also deactivated and we have a custom off-road mode as well and uh, now for example let's check out the custom a mode because we have an a and b custom modes which we can absolutely customize to our needs so for example if i switch on the custom a and go to the settings then for uh, first of all uh, the bike offers to copy any of the existing modes but I, if i do not want this then i can step in and uh, customize customize everything uh, by myself so for example the engine map if i wanted a sport a road an off-road or a rain engine map the engine braking this can be changed in five different steps the throttle response as well the traction control i can put to rain road or sport mode uh, and i can change the anti-lock braking if it sh uh, shall work as in a rain or road or an off-road mode uh, also the suspension damping sport balanced comfortable or off-road soft uh, and off-road uh, hard and uh, i can change the adaptive ride heights which is an extremely big thing of the pan america and we are going to speak about uh, after the suspension about the suspension it's really hard to say anything bad uh, in the front we have massive telescopic forks and in the rear central suspension unit and uh, in the special edition all of these are uh, semi-automatically working uh, so you do not have to change anything even the preload is absolutely automatically uh, fixing to the load on the bike and uh, what you only have to do is to change the riding modes and when you change the riding mode then the characteristics of the whole suspension is working together with that parameter and the load you have on the bike So it's really nice as it is uh, doing its job. Uh, there is only one thing what I didn't really like. Oh, and the other thing is the brake system because we have an absolutely proper brake system. Uh, everything is coming from Brembo. Huge discs, uh, 320 millimeters in the front and a huge 280 millimeter brake disc in the rear. The only problem is that when you make a hard braking, then the front part of the bike is going extremely down. So just check out when I am accelerating and making a break, especially down heels, then it's going down so much that it can first of all disturb you, especially when you are riding into a curve. And second of all, when the uh, lamp's light, uh, uh, so the lighted area is shortening so much because of this, that uh, it can really disturb you because you lose the seeing of the light. Or the other thing is that when you are riding inside the curve, then the bike is not straightening up at all when you are making a front brake in the middle of the curve, so that's working properly. This, all, this is the only problem that when you make the braking in front of the curve, the lighted area is shortened very much and the starting of the cornering can be also problematic with this. Uh, so for, for this one thing you have to take care of. One of Pan America's great innovations is the adaptive right, right heights, which means that when you 
reduce the bike speed and stop, uh, then the bike reduces the height of the rear section with several centimeters, so you can reach the tarmac much easier if you are not a tall guy. Let's check out how is it working. We can set up if it shall work automatically, so it uh, reduces the height always depending on how hard you were braking. Uh, we can make it the, the auto with short delay or with long delay, whatever we wish, wish. And we can fix the right heights, for example, when we are tall guys or when we are riding off-road and do not want that under 5 km per hour the bikes uh, ground clearance should be lowered. And when uh, you check the dashboard and see this uh, small suspension unit before, uh, beside the gear indicator, then it always shows you that the bike just reduced the height of the rear section. Pan America suspension is uh, pretty nice and working absolutely properly uh, among light off-road conditions, but here the word light is very, very important because uh, uh, as a result of the 191 mm suspension travels and the quarter ton weight of the bike, you always have to uh, choose circumstances like this, which are not really hard off-road, but with the lots of electricities of the bike, uh, they are very easily uh, manageable and without any real problem you can ride uh, among conditions like this, especially there is a lot of electronics are taking care of you. But when choosing the riding mode, it's really important to take care of the road quality as well, because for example here on this uh, construction area, when I exactly target the bumps on the road mode, it's absolutely uh, nicely uh, wearable, but if I switch it to sport mode, then the whole suspension becomes absolutely much harder, so everything is hitting my hand and my back much harder than on the road mode. The bike got uh, absolutely modern TFT LCD, uh, which has a lot of information. This is the basic or the simple uh, picture of it. We have an RPM counter, I just showed it to you, uh, the exhaust speed. We have uh, some data in the middle, for example, the uh, overall kilometers, the temperature, the range and two uh, daily counters. We have the gear indicator, the full of amount we have and basic things like this. But we have uh, a much more complicated dashboard if you wish. The more complicated dashboard is called the widget dashboard because uh, the, we have the same picture but it's put uh, full of widgets all around the RPM counter. So all the data uh, we normally can check in the menu we see in the same time. Uh, here in the left corner we have some uh, navigation information. At the moment it is not active but we will activate it in a moment. And all these data, the, the range, the trip A, trip B, the odometer, uh, the temperature of the air and the water of the bike, the battery and the tire pressures and all of these can be customized what we want to see. The bike can navigate us with using the Harley Davidson application on your mobile phone. For example, now I choose a little city pretty close to here and uh, start the navigation. It search for the routes and when I press start then I got a lot of important infos on my mobile phone. For example, safety must be first while riding, always keep the traffic rules, uh, don't use your mobile phones while riding, uh, do not follow things uh, which are not safe for you and always keep both of your hands on the handlebar while riding. These are all written here and only afterwards I can uh, tell it to let's go and riding and from, I from the moment I started it on my mobile phone on the left upper corner of the dashboard I can see the navigation command but it is not enough because I can go straight to the uh, map mode and then I get uh, all the navigation commands and the map itself on the main part of the dashboard and only on the upper part and in the uh, corners I can see the other infos which are important for me while I'm riding. The seat position is nearly the same way comfortable as all the other big touring Enduros. This is the big advantage, the straight body position. First I was thinking why the foot pegs are positioned a little bit backways because first I uh, felt the 
relatively sharp knee angle this is not disturbing at all but let's say sporty the other thing is that my hands are pretty far away for, for from the handlebar they easily become straight which is not good so when I start riding on curvy roads I always have to bend myself a little bit to the front to reach well uh, with a bent enough arm uh, the handlebars and uh, next step was when I uh, first went off-road and stood up on the bike because the whole standing position is again a little bit strange and this is also caused because of the foot packs position which are uh, pretty back ways but uh, finally I realized that all this thing is not because of the wrong foot uh, pack position but the very very long fuel tank that's why this whole uh, uh, triangle uh, strange ability is uh, so the handlebar, the seat and the foot pack triangles uh, strange position this is not very very strange maybe it cannot even be felt for shorter riders only for, for tall guys like me but anyhow you have to get accustomed to it and then you will be able to ride fine with the Pan America when riding at lower speeds inside the city or for example off-road you start to feel that a lot of hot is coming from the Pan America first everybody is thinking that it is because of the water cooler but the ventilator of it is only on the left side and the bigger amount of heat is feelable on the right side and when I was riding off-road and making very slow maneuvers and turning around narrow places and things like this I realized that the hot is mainly coming first of all from the engine itself and second of all that's why we are feeling it very very strong on the right side from the exhaust pipe of the rear uh, cylinder although there is this uh, small pace which is uh, uh, limiting the heat uh, what you feel but when you are just stepping beside the motorbike it's so much hot that it's really burning you and then I'm still not thinking about uh, what happens when you fall to the right side and for example your leg is staying under the bike here where nothing is protecting the exhaust pipe the very strange front part includes very very strange lamps and lamp positions as well because here we have a very very wide LED main lamp this is the normal lamp and, and the high beam as well and this upper part is a, a cornering light but uh, not, let's not speak about them but check them how they are working and let's check out the Pan America's lights in a very dark and very windy road so this is the normal light uh, as all the modern LED systems the area that I can see is very very short with the high beam this is much 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 better and let's check out the cornering lights the three LEDs which are going on when I lean the bike more and more and I keep the high beam on and reach a corner and uh, check out the light and area as I start to lean the bike so this is the first, the second and it is very clearly and nicely possible to see the inner area of the corner you can see it pretty clear when I switch off the high beam and make some slaloming so it's very nice to see how it switches on the inner side's lights the only funny thing is when uh, we start to lean the bike and the cornering lights are switching on then uh, above the dashboard the very sharp light coming into our eyes uh, is a thing what we have to get accustomed to the windshield has four steps this is the basic windshield there is a bigger one a touring version but i was really satisfied even with this one the downast one is really low so it makes a lot of turbulence noises but it can be good inside the city uh, or for example when riding uh, light off-road and uh, or for very very short riders the second one is already good for the i think average not too tall riders third position is this one and there is a fourth one but in the fourth one the windshield is moving much more backwards than upwards and that's why it makes really a lot of noise for example for my 190 centimeters so i put it back to the third uh, step and here it was really good even up to extreme high uh, speeds uh, when i r r sit very very straight and i pull my upper body up then it makes some turbulence noises around my helmet but uh, if my 
back is bent just a very little bit, then it's already perfect. So I think that up to people 185 centimeters, this windshield will be very uh, sufficient even at high, so highway speeds or speeds like this. As our test bike is a Pan America Special Edition, let's speak about all the equipments which are included to the special version. Uh, first of all, the semi-active suspension, which, is, uh, uh, which has a load control as well, uh, and the tire pressure monitoring system is also only included in the special versions, just as the center stand, which uh, the bike is just standing on. The multi-position rear brake pedal, which is a very, very nice thing. You can turn around the brake pedal and then it comes to a higher position. So here it is good for stand-up riding and here it is good for normal seated riding. We also have a brush guard, which is uh, uh, protecting uh, not only the engine, but the cooling system as well. And the aluminum skid plate, which is a very long and strong uh, thing under the bike and uh, protects it from the down part. Uh, also, only the special version has the Daymaker adaptive, uh, so the cornering lights, which we already mentioned, the heated grips and the wind deflectors uh, under the uh, windshield, which uh, makes uh, the uh, rider's position and, uh, and uh, turbulence is much lower and much better, especially at high speeds. Uh, also, the steering damper, uh, which makes the stability of the bike higher and uh, the adaptive ride heights. Ride heights is also uh, selectable and buyable only for the special versions, just as the spoken wheels. All in all, we have to say that Harley stabbed a very brave one with uh, producing this brand new big touring enduro for us but this is a really really very good motorbike with a good engine uh, good uh, suspension very good uh, traveling comfort so all in all we cannot say too many bad things of course there is place for some criticisms like the heat or uh, or the front suspensions going down when braking, but nothing real hard with which it wouldn't be possible to live together. And what is the most important thing that uh, all in all, this is a real Harley Davidson. So not only uh, a touring enduro, uh, absolutely different from the big uh, family of the touring enduros. This is a Harley Davidson and a good touring enduro together in one body. If you liked our review and mainly if you liked the Harley Davidson Pan America, please push a thumb up on the review. Uh, if you can do it, donate our work. Please subscribe for our channel and watch our previous contents as well. And thanks a lot for your kind attention.